YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I'll just tell you up front that if this video is short, it's because I was short on recording time, and we gotta get little air to sleep. So I've only got so much time to record tonight. I will be bringing you more all the time, of course, though, so do not worry. When we last left off, Octavian had uh, recaptured Tolosa. We've got Bibract uh, besieged, and then we'll retake Visontio and Gergovia, and that should be the end of Octavian's rivals as we knew them. We do have this army for Lepidus back here that's being a pain in the butt. So I might go over here and uh, provide these guys with some poison, courtesy of air, in order to try and discourage their little... Uh, do it again! Poison them for real this time. Thank you. Anyway, it might discourage them from their little uh, escapades there of screwing up my public order. And it looks like, I mean, I could potentially put pressure back on Carthago Nova, which I want to do, because I really don't want Lepidus uh, being able to make a comeback. I want to finish him off. He's already made a comeback in the sense that uh, he's recaptured these provinces from the Celtiberian Confederation, so slightly annoying there. And we've got this enemy agent here that actually defected from me, and I might try and convert him back. Let's go ahead and end this turn, though, because there's really nothing else for us to do. Some of you are worried that my army at uh, Bibract might get attacked by reinforcements, that army that fled from before Octavian. It's possible. It is possible, but I'm going to risk it. Sieging them out will uh, leave me with a lot of troops and less, uh, less recouping time, I think. Nova Carthago still got a pretty strong garrison. We did chase off the raiding forces after poisoning them, so that was worth it. Octavian's rivals. Of course, they're using their agents all over me, which is going to be bad. We might be able to get rid of that one right there with their spy. I think that was the one that was stuck in we my do not have. army stack for a while, screwing me over. You are honorable, worthy, and strong, and only fool. Yeah, no reason for me to not have a non-aggression pact, especially if they're offering me money. So we got poison provisions here, which we is annoying battle. as crap. But, unfortunately, what happened? I like dishing out the poison. I'm not such a big fan of being the recipient of it. Let's see if we can get rid of this guy for a little bit. There we go. I guess by a little bit I meant for eternity since we ended up killing him. We got two more of Octavian's idiot agents up here. So, let's see what we can do. Uh, not, I'm not really worried about assassination. Let's see if we can coerce these jerks. Welcome back to the fold! Stinking traitor. Um, and then Octavian's rivals has a big army up here. I'm going to use this spy. Let's see if we can deal some poisoning back to them. We did fail, which is too bad, but that's fine. I want to chase these guys down. I'm going to catch them with Octavian. They're doing some bullcrap raiding over here. Uh, so I'm going to keep trying to face them down and see if they'll come and fight me. All these troops can be upgraded, which will be a nice use. 2,000 talents, but still it gives all my men bronze weapons and armor. Never a bad thing to have, especially when playing on this difficulty setting, since the AI gets a lot of buffs, so... Never a bad idea to buff your own troops in return. Still got a ton of food, so let's continue upgrading some of my town centers. That's gonna take most of the rest of my money on this particular turn. This fleet is looking a little better. Probably not strong enough still to challenge the garrison fleet combined with everything else they've got down there. There we go. I'll just get three more ships and we'll go after them. And that is going to be pretty much all of our money again. Hopefully we're about to get a big fight out of the Octavian's Rivals army. I'd really like to fight these guys out here in the open. Uh, they have a good army. It's one that I made for them. <laughs> and uh, I've got a pretty solid army here too with Octavian's. So this would be an epic battle. I don't know if they're going to take the, uh, the open field battle, though the AI tends to avoid that kind of thing, it seems like. What do you wish of me? Make that spy better at poisoning, and let's roll through a turn end here. Really excited, though, to finish off the rivals and get back to business. I'll have to do a better job of balancing my, uh, my political factions, which I did not do so well before. Okay, so they're going to sally out at Bibract and try and defeat me. I'm, they're going to have to come out onto open ground, and I have a lot of cavalry and good skirmishers and infantry. So I think I'm actually going to take this fight. 
I only have so much time on this video, but I do want to take this fight because I want to, again, try and minimize my losses. Who knows, maybe the auto-resolve would do better than I would, but it's been a while since we've gotten a good battle in the Octavian campaign, and again, I'm kind of hoping the other rival army comes after me. Uh, Octavian's wanting a little, a little piece of revenge. What is all this business going on over here? It's like some kind of horse plop on the ground or something. What in the world that is? Looks like slime... I don't know if that's a glitch or if it's supposed to be that way. Weird. Alright, whatever. I eh, kind of like this, like, double line skirmishers on the flank thing going on here. I'm going to keep this just for fun since I always do my boring single line formation. I'm going to go into a hard group just so I can move up at the proper speeds. I'm going to go ahead and move completely up on these guys. What do they got? Velites, plebs. Their Velites are in the center. That's fine. I'll just charge my legions forward and engage them. Their reinforcements are a long ways off and they're going to be horribly outnumbered. I want to keep my skirmishers on the flank where they might be a little more useful. Looks like I got my uh, first cohorts in here as well. First cohorts have really nice melee defense. Okay. I'm going to target those Velites, or Lites, or however you say it. I'm sure that Eric frequently and consistently pronounces it wrong. Let's bring my Legionaries in. Yeah, let's bring my Cav around. Legatus up. Elites there. Alright, so I'm going to go out of formation attack, rear charge those Vigiles. We got a veteran legionnaire there that's going to need dealt with and dealt with quickly. I'm going to keep my velites, <laughs> velites. If I keep trying to say it, I'm going to screw it up. Uh, let's bring these guys in, hit those veteran legionnaires, rear charge, out of formation attack, rear charge. All right, so I got my legionary cab coming into the back of these legionnaires there. I thought they were veteran legions. They are, so it's a good thing I charged them from behind. There we go. Doing quite nicely in this fight, actually. I'm going to pull back for another rear charge here and then chase off that Germanic scout rider. There we go. Pull my Velites back. Let's do another rear charge here. Let's watch these legions coming in. Oh, Pilla in the back. That's brutal. Yeah, so that's going to that's gonna finish those guys off pretty quick. Okay, so we knocked out enemy Velites. Their infantry really lasting a lot longer than it probably should after such a bunch of beautiful rear charges. We have to get our cab away from this fight. And let's finish off these stupid veteran legionnaires that have taken a full on rear charge. Bring these legionaries around. Uh, let's bring up my reinforcements that aren't tired. And let's fall back with these troops. And let's bring one of these guys up here. So I got another really good rear charge in the back of those veteran legions, and they are still hanging into that fight. Keep pulling all this cav back. And let's see... Got some mercenary Gallic warriors charging me here. And let's bring my Legatus over here. It could come in handy. One of these cab units down. And let's charge that mercenary spear unit. They're Germanic scout riders trying to get a hold of my Velites. Velites. Don't know why I all of a sudden started saying it like they do. Let's get our Legatus through here. Sorry, just trying to micro my way out of this as best I can. I'm going to get their skirmishers with my Legatus. That is another veteran legionnaire unit here, unfortunately. It is completely surrounded. Ah. Now my general's taking 
jab shots from over there. I want to get these Velites on the flank to get some better throws. To stay away from their spearmen over here. They've been chasing me. Yeah, I want to get some nice flank shots on that veteran legionnaire over here. Mercenary Gallic warriors are almost gone. And their veteran legionnaires are now wavering. So that should be the end of it. I'll throw a few javelins in, see if we can finish them. The enemy general is dead. All right, got a nice rear charge there. These vigiles are now wavering, so should be safe to just go ahead and charge them with my cav. Good. So I don't know that I necessarily saved myself a ton of casualties there, but most of my casualties were off my skirmishers, so that wasn't too bad. All in all, we, we did pretty well there. Able to catch the AI whenever their forces weren't fully combined. Those veteran legionnaires on very hard, man. Or legionaries, whatever you all want me to call them. Good grief, they're strong. And that's why I don't fight that siege battle, because I'm going to have to try and beat those guys back from a wall or a victory point, and it is not going to be pretty. So that's why I prefer to uh, siege them out whenever possible. No warrior like standing alone in Celt Iberian Confederation wants a defensive alliance. And what's for each other? And are they offering? I guess they're offering to go after. Or no, it's just showing my war target. Yeah. So I don't see any reason why not have a defensive alliance with these guys. Looks like the Arverni might be moving against some of Octavian's rivals. Um. For some reason. Oh, never mind. I was like, why is my keyboard not moving? It's because it wants me to either choose to occupy or loot. We're going to occupy it because it's uh, already Latinized, basically. So there's no, no reason not to. And I've got a couple of temples there that seems like I put those in place for public order purposes. So everything should be good. We've uh, got everything we need. We didn't lose any units in that army. Um, Octavian's rivals did run away from me over here. Let's see if we can uh, scout them down. They have retreated to Gergovia and forced march, and I cannot reach Gergovia. So let's again try to, to poison. This is not a very good spy, but we did succeed. And let's see what the effect was on these goons. They can only move half their normal range, so better than nothing. So Octavian's in hot pursuit of the, the main army there. We're gonna see if we can take care of business. This army should be in better shape now. I'm going to put this good veteran in here and let him... Actually, that's Octavian's veteran, but Octavian's troops are doing really well, so... Let's uh, send this veteran down to this army and start getting it leveled up some. This fleet is going to be mostly retrained. It's probably going to be strong enough for the purposes that I need, so let's move it down here. These guys are still retraining. Saguntum, Taraco, all good down here. And then this spy. Let's move the spy down here to support this army. And then this army here, not entirely complete, but it's a it's a nice little army. Um, let's take it up to this point here, and then get ready to uh, go retake some of the other areas that we had previously taken from Lepidus and and seize those back. Uh, Hopefully before the Celt-Iberian Confederation does, because I'd like to own those. And again, let's keep upgrading our town centers here, because I have a lot of food. It's going to take a massive portion of my money each turn. Uh, but that's fine. We can focus there. Just little by little, get them all upgraded. Should continue to drive my economy and, and lead to good, good returns. Got a spy that ranked up. We can now make her better at poisoning armies, which is exactly what I want. Let's make this army better at sieging so that I don't necessarily always have to siege out every time. And then let's end this turn and see what happens. We're getting pretty close to completing some research too. Have to go double check, see what I was researching just so I understand where I want to go next with the research. I think I'm mostly just trying to get to where I can unlock the buildings and different stuff that I, that I want. A lot of movement from Lepidus Rome. See what the rivals decide to do. I'm guessing they're still going to flee and use their agents. I don't see them turning to stand up to me since they haven't done it yet. 
So the, the rivals have been pretty cowardly thus far. So Lepidus Rome, the home settlement of this faction has been liberated. Really? Let's see, hang on, it says so. Liberated. The home settlement of this previously destroyed faction has been liberated. They may re-emerge. Oh, the Cantabri. So, Lepidus' Rome has freed the Cantabri. Yeah, I'm going to attack him anyway. <laughs> Ready for orders. Let's see. So, Octavian's rival still at Gergovia. And I'm going to come in and encircle them. None will escape. Oh, I should have poisoned, though, before I did the encircling, because then my spy... I can come after him, but whatever, it'll it'll force him into an attack one way or the other. Let's put the spy in my army, just to get her some uh, more experience. And then there's just a few of the rival troops left at Vasontio. I would uh, like to retake Vasontio. There's some uh, allied armies in the vicinity. I think what I may do is just come... Oh, oh it looks like an easy auto-resolve. Never mind. I figured they'd have a really strong garrison, but they do not. And occupy here as well. So Vesontio back under our control, as is Vibract. So we are actually in fantastic shape at the moment. Good. Well, let's see uh, where else I can uh, do some upgrading. We've got this town center here. And then let's go ahead and do the one at Brundisium. And again, I'm just going to keep cycling through those, get them done. My income is way up now because we've recaptured some of these places. We're going to lay a blockade down on Nova Carthago. And then we will bring our troops in to siege it via land. Also, this should cause attrition amongst the uh, enemy troops. However, yeah, they've still got a bunch of legions here. So I'd prefer to uh, put some siege time down on these guys. So let's continue the siege. They only have three turns until surrender because I've got them encircled. Again, should have poisoned them before I did that, but... Let's uh, just go ahead and bring the spy over, make sure that we're involved, and I'm going to keep bringing this agent down here. Ah, uh, there's that little traitorous spy. Let's see if she wants to be manipulated back to the, the right side. She's resisting, but she'll, uh, she'll see Patchy's point of view soon enough. And let's see, what was my stuff? So, okay, so I can upgrade my farms after this as well. Oh, this one gives me level 4 markets, wine shops, slaughterhouse. Interesting. And that one gives me the best farms. I'm not sure what I'll do next as far as uh, research. I'll have to think about it. Let's go ahead and pop another turned in, though. So let's see if uh, let's see if Octavian's rivals finally decide to stand their ground. Is that an Armenian army? In Apollonia it is. Look at that. Armenia must be a client state. Looks like the uh, Lepidus Navy is going to attack me outside of Carthago Nova. So it looks like this is going to be the end of this episode. So I'll fight this. And uh, that'll be the, the point where I leave off for this particular episode. Again, I know it's kind of short. But uh, didn't have a whole ton of time tonight. Really need to get a little air in bed. So that Mrs. Air and I can have some time together and get some sleep as well. Standard round. As you command. Uh, so artillery ships up front. I'm gonna kind of put my assault vessels in the center, and then skirmish vessels on the flanks. Okie dokie. I think we are ready. Yeah. So they are going to sally against me, but they'll try and uh, gather up their forces. Enemy reinforcements approaching. Oh, let's see. All right. So these enemy ships ought to be in firing range from my artillery, though it's not going to be wildly accurate from this distance. Uh, but we'll see if I get lucky and, and get a sink on any of it. I hear artillery shots incoming and splashing, which means we've got a couple of misses. Some of y'all said I can fire this on my own. That's true. I can. Let me try it real quick. I haven't done it in a long time. Whoop. Let's see if Eric gets lucky here. Nope. Short fire. Not bad, though. 
considering that was my first shot ever. Oh, that would have been it. Didn't lead it quite right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Feeling it. Oh, it did bounce off the deck, so not bad. All right, so enemies coming after me. Uh, the unfortunate thing about fighting the AI in these circumstances is that their little ships actually get fantastic ram damage versus your much larger, much more powerful vessels, which is pretty irritating. Let's go ahead and move up my assault ships. It looks like over here they're just trying to skirmish with me, which will not really go to their favor. I will go ahead and ram them, though. Important that you get your rams in, though, because the AI definitely wins as far as ram damage goes. And we did just sink that little wiener ship. And let's get a ram in here. And let's focus fire on this larger Quinkirin. Otherwise, looks like we're doing all right here. Let's bring this ship back. Let's ram here and ram here. And it looks like we put them down, but I lost this ship, and they're going to ram me here and possibly sink me because the... Nope, we got them. And let's take our general. And let's start dealing out some rams. Perfect. Getting some nice rams now. And here's a couple of more. Oh, yeah. Man, got some real good ones there. Took those guys out. And we're being boarded over here, but that's okay, because we can bring in the side ramming. And take these guys out. There's a bunch of ships sinking nearby them, too, which might block the ramming. Did get a good side ram there. And I'm getting a lot of javelin fire under these uh, veteran legions. Getting a lot of rams, but this uh, that assault ship is hanging tough. Looks like we've taken out every last remaining ship. I think the only thing I lost was my raiding Himalaya, so very successful naval battle for me, which is quite the opposite of normal. But I've got some nice, nice kills there. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, episode of Octavian's Rome and the Imperator Augustus campaign. I'm actually really enjoying this. I like playing Rome in the regular campaign as well. It's fun, but this one's kind of interesting. Caesar and Gaul and this stuff kind of give you like a, a more cool focus with Rome. Of course, unless you're just one of those big Rome fans and you like taking out the whole known ancient world with Rome. But yeah, so Lepidus Rome is going to remain blockaded, which means they're very vulnerable to my siege and are probably going to have to give in here soon and, and come out and attack me. Aha! Unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till next time to see this, but uh, the next time is going to be a large battle between Octavian. Uh, his rivals and the garrison forces joining them. So it's actually going to be a pretty big fight. Ought to be fun. So you have something to look forward to. Air of Carthage, signing off. See you then.